and I love your shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Clearly a pro sex toy. <laughs> So my name is Eva Bloom and I use they and she pronouns. I'm a sex science communicator, which means that I break down really complicated sex science and bring it to the people to improve their sex lives. And I'm also a queer sexuality educator. Um, so I've really been a nerd all my life. And when sexuality and relationships became relevant to me, I was really like, okay, let us apply all that nerdery to understanding sex and relationships. I learned about the idea of sex research at my undergrad doing like a research-based science program. And then I also did uh, my master's thesis on sexting. Stress is one of the biggest factors associated with lower desire. So people are feeling pretty stressed, more conflict happening in a relationship low desire, less like solo and partnered sex. Also, as somebody who studied sexting, I'm very excited that things like sexting and sex toys are being kind of normalized in the past couple years. And also, as a queer person, I'm very excited to see like a wave of people coming out over the past few years and like stepping into their authentic sexuality. Uncluttered, clear photos of your face and your body, smiling. Ditch the abundance of group photos. Ditch the excess gym selfies. Um, and I would say like really showcase your hobbies, passions, and interests. Give people something to come into your messages and ask you about and like get that conversation rolling. In general, go in with a sense of curiosity, um, not having any expectations and really up to like have fun. And I would say like follow what you think will make the other person smile and like happy. If they've said they really like cats, taking them to a cat cafe might make them happy. <laughs> Um, in terms of having good casual sex, I think the first point is about being really clear about what you want and what your desires and boundaries are. Do you really like one night stands? Um, is that like where your vibe is? Or do you prefer to have kind of like an ongoing relationship with somebody who you're also sleeping with? Um, and being really clear and open in communication around that with your partner. My workshop is called Compassionate Casual Sex, so I'm definitely a big advocate for like just because you are not dating them romantically, you can still like bring them snacks. <laughs> After you have sex, you can still like text them the next day being like, that thing you did with your hands, it was really nice. Like people still appreciate that kindness even if you're just sleeping together. Again, like releasing your expectations and leading with curiosity because there are so many ways to explore solo pleasure. I think our idea of masturbation is really like go right to the genitals and either that's like penetration or like you're gonna rub one out and that's gonna be it. But your solo intimacy experience can really be like a full, a full body experience. I would reflect on what sensations bring you pleasure just by yourself if you're not using sex toys. Do you usually go for like external stimulation, internal stimulation, both? Do you like a gentle pressure, a more like intense pressure? And you can apply that to exploring sex toys. Um, you take that information to like a sex toy store and someone can guide you through it there. But in general, if you're starting, I would recommend something like a bullet vibrator. I wish I had known that having sex that is fun and pleasurable with you and a partner is like a learning process. Every new partner that you sleep with, um, you're learning together. Um, and every sexual partner that you have should be really stoked to learn what brings you pleasure and really committed to bringing that, bringing that pleasure to you. And also I wish I had learned in the university that it's okay to be gay. Took me a while to get there. If you're feeling butterflies, you might be gay. That's fine. <laughs>